Hello everyone, Ken here. I really enjoyed making the video about where I believe the NBA three-point line should actually be, and I've decided to continue on with that analysis to determine where, if the NBA were to instate a four-point line, where that should actually be. Now, there is some precedence for this. A lot of teams are actually practicing with a four-point line uh, in, their, in their practice courts. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers are an example of this. They believe that taking deeper shots uh, spreads out the offense and can potentially create more scoring, uh, scoring opportunities for them. The Big Three League has also created uh, four-point circles on the court, so there is a little bit of precedence in professional, uh, some form of professional basketball already. With that being said, I think it's, it's cool and interesting to do these analyses, um, and I do them in hopes that professional sports leagues will really start using uh, some math and some analysis uh, when it comes to making decisions about the rules. If you enjoy this video, please hit that like button, and if you want to see similar content to this, please subscribe to my channel. I have been fortunate enough to make a little bit of money off some of the content that I've created, and I'd love to be able to give it back to my viewers in some way. Uh, I thought that it'd be fun to give away a copy of the Sprawl Ball book, where uh, a lot of this analysis is based out of. Uh, to be qualified for this, please just comment in the section below uh, with where you believe a fabricated NBA four-point line should be. If you're interested, you can also follow me on Twitter. It's Kenji underscore DS. I post a lot of my videos, similar content, and some of my thoughts on uh, ongoing sporting events. Okay, now on to the analysis. If you haven't watched the video about where I believe the three-point line should be, I, I would recommend checking that out before you move on to this video. But for the SparkNotes version, I believe the fairest three-point line is where the points per shot inside of the three-point line, so all two-point shots, are equal to the points per shot of all shots outside of the three-point line. And in that analysis, that number came out to around 0.92 points per shot. So if we want to understand where a, you know, the fairest four-point line would be, we would also want to set all shots outside of that four-point line equal to that 0.92 number. So we'd want to find uh, a distance of that line where all of the points per shot outside of that line were equal to 0.92. For this analysis, I'm going to assume that the NBA was using you know, analysis and math to determine the original three-point line. So we're assuming a 25.2 foot continuous arc as a three-point line. To actually make the projections about what uh, points per shot would be by certain ranges, we need two things. We need first to be able to predict the make percentage of a shot by distance. So, you know, if you have a, a 27 foot shot, what is the probability that that shot will go in? And you also need to predict or estimate the distribution of shots uh, for those four point shots in that range. So in order to actually get the points per shot, we take the percentage of shots from a certain distance. So let's say it's 27 feet and beyond. So the percentage of shots at 27 feet, 27.1 feet, 27.2 feet going out. And we multiply that by the make percentage at that distance. And then finally we multiply that by four. And we sum up all of those shots across that distance to get points per shot for all four, four point shots. So the first thing that we really want to look at is make percent chance by distance. So here is the actual make probability by distance. As you can see after around 27 feet it starts getting a, a little messy and a little bit wonky. So what we're going to do is use a little bit of machine learning to uh, normalize that line and to make some projections about make probability by distance. So for this we use a logistic regression and we get a line that looks very much like this. I trained the model using only shots in three-point range because I believe that would be more representative of four-point shots. The model was fairly accurate. It on average was only about two percent off by distance uh, which I think is sufficient for this type of analysis. If we were to move forward and were actually to make a ruling based on this, I would try a couple of different models. Uh, the graph here again shows the, uh, the model projected 
uh, make probability by distance. As you can see, it's a lot smoother of a line, and some of the relevant lines on the court are also on there. So the 22-foot uh, shot, the actual three-point line, um, and also you know my three-point line, as well as half court. This graph shows you how well our model actually maps to real results. As you can see, the blue line is projected and the orange line that bounces around it is the actual make percentage. This is pretty close, in my opinion, um, and I think that it substantiates this model. Now we evaluate the makeup of four-point shots. For this analysis and for simplicity's sake, I think it makes the most sense just to shift the distribution of three-point shots over. Remember, we're not actually looking at the raw number of shots. There will very likely be less four-point shots than three-point shots, unless there is, again, an efficiency in where the line is. Um, but what we care about is the actual distribution. So the percent of shots from just outside the four-point line, uh, you know, a foot outside of the four-point line and going back further. Because we don't have a, a true understanding of what the four-point line would look like, I believe that using the three-point line distribution is practical. We would probably expect that it would be a little bit of, of a, a steeper distribution with a smaller standard deviation, more shots just outside of the four-point line uh, than further back from it, but there's no way of knowing that right now, and that's probably something to look at in uh, an expanded analysis here. So this graph shows the distribution or the number of shots taken from each distance on the court. As you can see, there's a spike close to the rim, there's a spike just outside of 22 feet where the corner uh, three is represented, and then there's a huge spike. The most, uh, you know, the, the mode of shots are taken just outside of three point range. So again, for four point shots, I just wanna look at the, the right before that spike of three point shots. I think that that'll be most representative of what four point shots that distribution will look like. So in order to determine where the actual four point line should be, I just ran a model for each incremental distance on the court of where the four point line could be. And I looked to see at what line was equal to that 0.92 points per shot number that we looked at. So what this model does is it basically just takes all of the shots beyond uh, where we're saying the four point line is. So let's say we're saying the four point line is 27 feet. It takes all of those shots, it multiplies the distance of those shots um, by what we've calculated our make probability to be. So we get a make probability by distance, then we multiply that by four, because that's a four point shot, then we multiply it by the number, the percent of shots, of four point shots that are taken from that range. So all of the, you know, four point shots that are taken will add up to 100%, and this will get our expected points, or points per shot, Four point shots. So in this graph, the blue line is points per shot, and the red line is the break-even of 0.9 points per shot. So as we can see, at 26 feet, almost exactly, is where our break-even is. So based on this math, a four-point line should actually be at 26 feet, which is only 0.8 feet further than our current three-point line that I've created. It looks like the make probability for shots outside of 26 into 27 feet goes down drastically. And these shots are very difficult to make, people don't practice them, they're usually just chucking them up. So this might be why, and you know, for newer data this might change as people are starting to take longer and longer short, uh, shots, and now that people are practicing with a hypothetical four point line in their gyms. Obviously there are some challenges with this analysis. Uh, the first is we, it, it's really difficult, and we probably shouldn't assume that the four point distribution is equal to that of the three-point distribution. We would expect, again, as I would mentioned earlier, it to be a little bit sharper, uh, but we have no way to substantiate that at this time. We also know that the current three-point distribution is because uh, is, is spiked because the three-point shot is a hyper-efficient shot. It is one of the best shots on the court. So if we were to use a three-point shot that was equal and expected value of points per shot, the distributions could look very differently. In addition to that, um, if where we're putting our four-point line, um, it would cause the value of the three-point line actually to go up because those now four-point shots would have historically been counted as three-point shots. 
So we're not actually getting a, tw a true equilibrium at 0.92. This would be a three level optimization problem, which in this case might not even be solvable based on the aggressive drop off in shooting percentage after that 26, 27 foot mark. This analysis suggests to me that a four point line would be gimmicky. I think it already is a little bit gimmicky in the big three. Um, it would also likely have very little strategic value just because we have um, it normalized to equal the same points per shot as these other shots. If you had a really good four point shooter, maybe it would be worth more, but at a baseline, it probably wouldn't be much more. It would also change the game of basketball as we know it because you could have a potential five point swing in one play and that opens up a whole new can of worms in terms of like a, a Hail Mary shot that people could take. So for the greater game of basketball, I don't think a four pointer would generally be good. As usual, thank you so much for watching and please leave any comments or thoughts that you have in the section below.